Yeah, that's a good point. Synergy. And and we must think outside of the box as well. Yes. Don't forget <laughs> that. That damn box. <laughs> <laughs> if only companies just wouldn't start their offices in a box. I mean, it'd be easy to think outside of the box. To make our mat, uh, our name brand more ubiquitous, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Ubiquity. We need to be have ubiquity with everything. <laughs> Leveraging those synergies, thinking outside of the box. We've got to shift paradigms. Yeah, shifting <laughs> paradigms. Big business. Big business. The global economy. Whenever I answer the phone, I'm like, hello. What pissed you off? It's a great argument to have. I love my mom, but I think she's half crazy for doing that. How dare you? Do you oh. work with your girlfriend, Mark? Or your wife? I keep them separated. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I call people, they don't answer the phone, I'm like, them. Wrong number, click. Well, he's not that smart. And it sometimes he sounds like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Go. But therefore, you're an ass, and I don't want to talk to you anymore. Yeah, but what do we know? Okay, everyone. Welcome. This is What Do We Know? I'm Mark. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mike. Hey! <laughs> streamers! <Did it>. Streamers! <laughs> Fireworks! Shoot them off! <laughs> That was good. That was by far the best one. <laughs> yeah, we just ruined it by talking about it. <laughs> um, well, by, the, by the way, the, the listeners and view well, the viewers, viewers can tell what time we're recording this episode because I think Jeff and I both have coffee, right? We we have coffee cups. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I'm drinking a sports drink that's very dark. <laughs> Is that wine out of a bottle? Come on, I have more class. It's rum and coke. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Always good for one on the run. That's why yes. it's there. There you go. Okay, so today I would like to talk about um, things that we used to believe when we were younger. And hopefully, nah, I, I guess hopefully it's not the right word, but maybe we don't hold those same beliefs now. And I'm not talking about religion or politics, but just things that, you know, people told you that were uh, things that you, that were truth, but actually aren't really the truth. Okay. So I'll give you the first example. Santa Claus? <laughs> I mean. No, he's real. <laughs> I mean, of course he's, he's real. He just doesn't squeeze down chimneys. Uh, uh, that would be crazy talk. Um, okay, so my first example is the uh, equinox. The uh, equi during... the equi you know what? Hold on. Sorry, guys. You're going to have to hold on one second. I got to go do something real quick. I know. Wow. Weird. I know. Weird. Hold on. Uh, good Good way to stop the show. Dead in I wonder if we're still recording. Oh, we are. Definitely. I can yes, see yes. So, you know, okay. I can understand how the equinox <laughs> could remind you of something really important. And you're like... Wait the fuck, man. I got to go. The laundry <laughs> is burning and my rice is... He, 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 just remembered, he just remembered he had to stand an egg up on end. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> he was like, my eggs are all like on the side. Oh, they're all still in their package. We will, they they don't stand up by themselves. I have to, <laughs> I have to do something about that. All right, go on. Go on. What were you saying? <laughs> oh, so I, I was told as a young kid that the equinox, the egg stands on its end. And if I was a smarter kid uh, when I was younger, I would realize this really doesn't make any sense. But, you know, trusting as I was as a young child, I believed it. And... I mean, I don't think they do this now. I think it's like, you know, most people like, you know, in the 2000s or whatever, they'll be like, what the hell are you talking about? This egg scan. But in the 90s, this was a huge popular thing. I remember my school would like bring kids to the lunchroom on the equinox. Uh, this is, um, for those who don't know, this is like in the spring or in the fall where the um, earth is perpendicular 
like the axis of the earth is perpendicular to the sun. So you have like 50% daylight, 50% uh, night time. So this is when like it's equal day and night, right? And it's some kind of special time of the year where if you take an egg and you're trying to stand it upright on its end, it will magically stand on its end. But you, you know, you needed to cheat a little bit because it was really difficult to do. So you use some salt or a lot of salt and then it would magically work. And you're like, wow, this is true. <laughs> I mean, Mike, you did this when you were a kid, right? Oh, sure. Everybody heard about that kind of thing. And well, it, like, you have I to remember, now. Do you, I remember do you, being dumb enough to believe that till well into my 20s. <laughs> In your 20s, okay. <laughs> not, not judging because I can understand why but oh, yeah. you have kids now yep <clears throat> any of this stuff like have had this come back um you know I, I I'm big a firm believer in you know getting away from this kind of stuff so um in fact even so I've kind of talked about this and we don't want to get too into it, but um, I'm, I'm uh, kind of a religious guy. And so when you talk about, you know, um, like the Easter bunny and things like that, like we don't even encourage that, even though, you know, that's pretty popular and it's hard to get away from that. So you don't do the Easter bunny. You do yep. us. Uh, so <clears throat> we do Santa Claus, but we, minimize that as well and like the, I was, and tooth fairy sorry just gonna get all of them out there um yeah we're probably gonna do the tooth fairy um well I, because that's a little different that's just sort of like a you know just kind of fairy tale sort of made up thing whereas um as far as the easter bunny goes like to us you know easter being um, Christians like Easter is pretty important okay. so we don't want to kind of you know cartoon that holiday over with this made up rabbit <laughs> uh, you know that sort of thing well okay because I grew up uh, Catholic as, uh, as well and I, I as, as well, a Catholic. Catholic. okay well as a Christian right. and one of the things that I find very strange thinking about it is if you're gonna be a Christian Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny are, are like the worst things you can oh. do if you want them to believe in like, you know, Christ and Jesus making the loaves of bread. Because you're like, you're like, in one instance, you're like, uh, Santa Claus, he's real. He can do all these miracles. But we just all made that up. But now we got Jesus and he can do miracles. But no, that's, that's the truth. <clears throat> Probably not the best thing for your religion per se. Right, and that's kind of why I said, like, we, we don't really do the Easter Bunny at all. I mean, we'll, we'll sort of talk. I guess we've talked about the Easter Bunny a little bit here and there, and we'll do, like, the egg thing, but we definitely try to make it more of a religious holiday. <laughs> I um, didn't think you guys were actually going to keep talking, so I missed a lot going on here. I have got a story yeah, for you. We don't even really <laughs> need you for the show. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... And, you know, same kind of thing with Santa Claus. Like, we try to minimize his role in Christmas as well. Um, right. You know, we talk about him, and he'll bring a present or two. But most of the presents are from us, and we try to make it a religious holiday kind of thing. I, I had my mother. My mother was really upset with my brother, sister, and I. Because one Christmas, we came, to, uh, we came uh, to where the presents are in our living room. And it was really early in the morning. And we were like, Santa came. And we started tearing into that sh <laughs> those presents and you know like not being not, not knowing what's going on my I can mom, picture mark as a little kid getting presents from sam going i'm gonna tear into this shit right now <laughs> <laughs> exactly how i was as a kid um, but you know my mom put all this work into making the presents buying it and all this stuff and we were halfway tearing into our presents before she came out and realized what was going on and she was really pissed off and you know <laughs> My sister, brother, and I were like, but Santa gave you these gifts. Like, I don't know why you're so mad. We're opening Santa's gifts, right? So, hmm. <laughs> so, out of curiosity, Mike, if you want to minimize Santa in religion, why even have anything from Santa? What's the difference of minimizing Santa and 
Completely telling your out. kids like that, just not even going down the Santa route? Um, well, just because sort of mainstream culture makes it oh, here. get it's away from it like entirely. Um, technical issues today on my end. <laughs> if only we had planned this show in it. <laughs> um, but no, um, so I mean, we don't mind sort of having a little bit of the magic of Christmas sort of thing going on. But then later on in life, once he realizes there is no Santa, it's he's still been taught to appreciate the religious part of it. Who gets the good presents, or who do they come from? Is that a Santa thing, or is that a you guys thing? <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I guess both, kind of. But I, 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 if there was one big present, it would probably be from us. Okay. I mean, the socks and underwear should always come from Santa. That way they yeah, won't be that not. upset. <laughs> they used to always come from pets in my house. That, that is true. But, that is but true. we don't have any pets, so I'm not sure where they come from now. <laughs> okay. So anyways, this Equinox thing gets me into another argument that I had with Jeff when we were younger. And I don't know if you still believe in this, Jeff, but the Coriolis effect on the draining of a toilet or you sink. Know, it's kind, of, it's kind of amazing to me that the Coriolis effect is taught so regularly, or at least was when I was you know, younger, taught very regularly um, in schools. The Simpsons even did a whole episode about it, right. not, uh, not in trying to prove that it was wrong, but in the fact that it exists and this is exactly what it does. Granted, in The Simpsons isn't the place you're supposed to be going for education per se, but they usually don't go out there and try to put off... They, they'll make fun of something, and that wasn't really making fun of it. It was actually right. going out there because it's a, a known thing that happens. I'm really shocked that it was taught so heavily to really be completely invalid. Right, it is. I mean, it, it is an effect that is real, but it... it Not is on the scale of what they teach that it is. Toilet right. bowl. Well, I mean, it, it, it has an effect on, like, hurricanes and stuff, but it's sort of like saying the tides. We all know that tides are real, and it's caused by the moon. But it are has... You sure? Yes. But it, I'm not Bill O'Reilly. Um, but <laughs> it has zero effect, really, when it comes to a glass of water. You don't see tides happening on your glass of water. But it does on a very large scale work with, you know, oceans. Uh, but that's what I was getting with the first one, with the Equinox. Like, it wasn't just the schools that were teaching me about the egg standing on its head. I remember watching news programs, and they would do this stuff on the news all the time when they would come to that time of the year. Like, hey, you know, I'm a, you know, semi-professional news person. Look at me put an egg on its end. I mean, I still can't tell... If I believe that that's completely false or not, only because of the fact that it is pushed so heavily. I remember sitting there in schools at the Equinox and you know, your job was to bring an egg. They would tell everybody to bring in an egg because most people would forget. So they would at least get a couple that they could play with and we would start putting them up in class. And why the science teachers, these people are smart people. They, they, yeah. they study this. They have degrees in this stuff. Why is it that they, if it scientifically has no basis, then how come they scientifically? Yeah, teach and the it? thing is, it was like now that we're older, you get to, you start asking questions, but they're really obvious questions. Like, but my teacher uh, was older. My teacher wasn't my yeah, age yeah, in but, high school. But, like they were, but, they were at my age now. Right, but I mean, if somebody's, but if you were to ask that same teacher, and they're adults and they're intelligent and whatever. How does this effect work? What what causes it causes it to stand and said? Like, it's not the attraction to the sun because, of course, we were we grew up in Michigan, so we're not perpendicular to the sun. Like when we're on the equator, so that doesn't make sense. Um, it's not the rotation of the Earth because the rotation of the Earth is still constant all year round. So there's really nothing to really explain this phenomenon, except for people just believe that it was real. Well, and just because a professor believes it, like you said, he's old and wise. But at one point, there were lots of old and wise people who thought the Earth was the center of the galaxy as well. Or that it was flat or, yeah, exactly. you know. So, I mean, and, and that's true, but 
in today's day and age or in that day and age 15 years ago uh it's not really not much scientific breakthrough has really come in studying the effect of like the equinox it's not as far as i know it hasn't been a big point of study but it just all of a sudden in the last 15 years they're like yeah that's fake <laughs> oh <laughs> okay if there was a big study that like the, the guy the people uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He just won the uh, Nobel Prize for proving the Big Bang Theory again. Proving it, it. Yeah. He, he like did a uh, big study about um, the, the way that the particles work in the universe and uh. this, that, the other. And it essentially proved the Big Bang Theory, or at least the possibility of the Big Bang Theory. And he won a... Nobel Prize for something that's already been like a well accepted concept. I was going to say, I would have to look into that because I thought they pretty much overwhelmingly agreed at this point there was no big bang, just more of a big um, expansion. Hold on, let me see. Well, Joyce. actually, the big bang is a misnomer. The, uh, the big, it's an expansion, but at the rate from which it originated, it seems like a giant bang. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure on that as well. I'm trying to I'm trying to look it up real quick while we're while we're here. Um, George like, Smoot seems to be the big name that's coming up, but I'm not sure if that's actually accurate. I think it's uh, George Smoot did did a big cameo apparently in the TV show The Big Bang Theory, so it keeps oh, really? going up when I. That's nice. <laughs> so either way, I'd have to I'd have to do the research on that, but I'm trying to look up the uh, the. So, I, well, and I got a story I can tell real quick here. So, uh, you guys know the, the TV show Mythbusters. Yeah. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, it's like a show where they test all these different kinds of myths about things. And my wife and I, um, we actually had a disagreement on one of these shows that goes along with the same sort of thing. Um, they were talking about whether, so here in Michigan, daddy long leg spiders are kind of a big thing. Right, right. They're just all over the place, and they're these sort of harmless-looking spiders, and they're in your basement all the time. And um, there's there was a myth that they are actually the most venomous spider, like on the planet. I think was the myth. What the daddy long legs? Yes, but the yeah. fangs are just so short they can't ever puncture human skin, so that we don't really know it because they don't ever kill anybody. Right. And I remember when they tested this myth or said they were going to test it. I, I remember like seeing something out loud along the lines of that's ridiculous. Why would they? <laughs> I've never even heard of this. Why would that happen? She said, "Oh no, it's that's true." Oh yeah, I definitely no, I definitely heard that. Well. Yep. I never heard that my whole life, and then so of course we bet on it. You know, <laughs> you're like I'm like no way that's true. They're they're huh? definitely gonna find that that's well, not true. <laughs> well, first of all, I don't really actually think they're real spiders. <clears throat> What? <laughs> yeah, so, so Let's bring this myth first. to another dimension here. They're not birds, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. They're, an, they're like an insect, but they're not actual spiders. They're like, I don't know what category they are, but I remember reading once. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not real spiders. So we'll have to double fact check this with someone else before. But <laughs> don't, uh, they have, don't they have eight legs? Yeah. Isn't that what makes them like a spider? <laughs> I'm almost positive. Uh, I don't think eight legs and an octopus isn't a spider, is it? <laughs> Octopuses are spiders, maybe, Mark. Maybe it is. <laughs> maybe a daddy long legs is an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> it's a land octopus. I feel like I could go over in my utility room right now and find a daddy long legs, and we could count its legs. Uh, I was. Are you going to ask him if he's a spider? <laughs> <laughs> but um. Anyways, we kind of got off track here, but. But yeah, my wife and I were definitely at odds on that conversation because number one, I had just never heard it and I didn't believe it because I figured right. someone would have died from that at some point. We would have definitive proof. How but did that was they the whole point, test is it? That their mouths are so small or their fangs are so small they can <laughs> poison you, so nobody would die because their fangs are so small. Well, but odds are that somewhere along the line, some like ge genetic mutations, daddy long legs would have been born with longer fangs long enough to puncture human skin. So how did they test it? Uh, well, number one, I think they just drew venom out of its sack and tested like the lethality of it. And then I, in fact, if I recall correctly, um, I think they found out that its fangs 
aren't so short that it can't puncture human skin. Yeah, so they just had, had him get bit all over the place. <laughs> 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 they had Adam put his arm in this giant tube just filled with him, and he kept getting bit. <laughs> uh, really? I, yeah. I've never been bit by a daddy long legs, though. I don't oh, that you know of. Yeah, that I know of, I guess. I don't remember it, but probably during the night you probably get bit a lot, actually. Yeah, the spiders just crawl over your face at yeah. night. That's what probably that's good. they keep me they keep me warm. <laughs> <laughs> a blanket made of spiders. E- exactly. Nice. So do you have something, Jeff, that you used to believe that um you know, maybe you don't believe now? I mean the Coriolis effect is a big one. I did hear when I came back into the room there was a conversation about Jesus. And I okay. kind of want to know where I'm religious that on this because religion is well. I, I want to say it's, I want to do something separate from religion. So something else, maybe you were told that was true oh. that you pretty much know as fact isn't true. And and I don't think we were really talking about believing in religion. We were just talking ch- talking about the relation of Christmas and Santa Claus and birth. Well, of what what I was gonna say is J- Jesus is. I mean, been proven to be a real person that existed, right, right. whether you believe you know, he's a savior, et cetera, et cetera. It's a whole different thing. I just do think it's funny when I used to go to church and things like that, I always, and I think a lot of people, especially because of the depictions, assumed Jesus was a white guy. And I mean, that's something I definitely don't believe in now because of just the, right. the area that he was born, the area that he like did all this work okay. in. And I find that really funny. Okay. Most likely Jesus was mostly looking like a Jewish slash Air, uh, person of Arabic descent. But if Jesus is the son of God, he could look whatever the fuck he wants to. I mean, that's true. That's extremely I mean, true. It if you take it from a religious a very standpoint. White Jewish looking person for all we know. I, I just feel or like black that's, or that was something we just kind of made into what we wanted it to be as white America. But I wonder so in in other religions over in that side of the world, there I've never really looked, but do their pictures that they have of Jesus like that they show over there? Well, what what are ask, they? I never really let me ask you. Um, when you think of Buddha, what does he look like to you? A short, fat guy sitting there like this. An so why though? Because like I mean, if you actually hear the story of Buddha, he basically started off being a starved person that didn't eat anything, and then he went to very moderation of living life, like the actual story of Buddha. So there's no instance where he actually got like really huge or really fat. And all I can think of is we see this one statue in China where like you have the gold Buddha and he's like got a huge stomach and that's what everyone latched to. Mm -hmm. It was the best one. I don't know. Wait, I loves the fat Buddha. Is that... I, well, I don't. I don't know anything about the Buddhist religion. That's the thing. Is well, I can't say I don't know anything. I know very little about the Buddhist religion. So I don't know. In my mind, that's just what Buddha is. I didn't even know that he. It, that was possibly a myth that he wasn't a fat guy. Like because I, I just I never really researched it. I guess. Right. I was difference. gonna say I didn't know the backstory either. So that's pretty interesting to me. Oh, some things that I used to think when I was younger, though, back to the topic, that drinking alcohol out of a straw gets you drunk faster. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like the oxygen can get to your brain or something. You're right. Like, we knew the science behind it. (laughs) (laughs) And we used to just, whenever Mike, you would throw a party, we would have, we'd always drink out of straws, even if it was a beer. Because back in the day when we were drinking, like, I started drinking with you when I was, like, 17 years old. I wasn't drinking because I loved the taste of alcohol. I was drinking to get wasted because that's what you did when you first well, started drinking. And back then, it wasn't like we could afford top-shelf alcohol either. Right. <laughs> cheapest stuff we could possibly find. Fit the pop-off, fit the peach tree. Oh, and fit it wasn't the... even pop-off back then. It was 5 o'clock. Oh, 5 o'clock. Yep, fit the 5, five o'clock, <laughs> fit the peach tree, and a fifth of uh, 80, 80%. Like, no, no. no. Hundred proof soco. Okay, so I got that from you. Where the hell did you get that information from, Jeff? The straw. The straw. I think I got it from Mike, but I mean, it's it's relatively common uh, right. myth that exists. I think MythBusters at one point actually tested that as well. I don't remember how they did it or the results, <laughs> but I remember it being discussed on that show. It's a it's a common myth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, but it's sort of like. Oh, how do we get to believe in things like the equinox 
of course, the news, the school, Coriolis effect. I, I, I swear that was from school, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Um, but so whole, whole, I'm pretty sure it's not from teachers. Here's another big one that I'm sure that you would know, Mark, because of your, you know, you used to really be into video games back in the day. What happens in Super Mario Brothers if you jump over the flagpole? You just keep on going. What happens in a myth mind that you've been told at some point? Maybe you're the first one that ever did it so that you knew the answer. It was always the myth that if you jump over the flagpole, you get a crown. And you wear a crown for the rest of the game. It's a very Uh, common myth uh, with Super Mario Brothers. See, the real reason why I probably would never believe that is I had a Game Genie, which gives you a super jump. And I have jumped over the flagpole. Oh, I've also <laughs> jumped over the... There was one level I used to try it on all the time because it was the thing was just a little bit closer to the flagpole and I successfully jumped over the flagpole once in my life that I can remember. Um, and I was so was, excited. And my sister and I were sitting there cheering and running into infinity. And we're like, yeah, something's about to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> and, and there's no way to go back. So it's nope. just... You have to reset the game. And That's it. i Time ran out. Like, just like what happened sub- to the sewer that when you after you beat that you when you touch the flag you come out and there's a sewer, but there's no sewer when you jump over the flag. Right, right. <laughs> or it's like the sub levels in Super Mario Brothers. If you cheat that very first uh, warp zone, you can go right. down the tube before it's a warp zone, and you go into the underwater the sub levels. And it right. was always this myth that. The sub levels eventually would take you somewhere. I don't even remember where, but it really was just the underwater level over and over and over and right. over and over again. <laughs> the worst well, level in existence. And here's one that's going to be important here coming up in Michigan pretty soon. Do you guys remember hearing that being out in cold weather gave you colds? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess that was just a common thing people thought getting. So explain to me why this isn't true. It, well, it doesn't give you colds. The cold virus is what gives you the cold. However, you're, when you're cold, your immune system is down a little bit, so you're more likely to get a cold. But just so being outside will not give you a cold. And there's other factors. Like They think that um, when you, it's cold weather, you're more likely to be around other people. If you're not out in the fresh air, open, right. separated from people, like you're See. in close environments i would still give that one i wouldn't say that one's false per se i I would say the outcome can still be attributed to the income the the reason (laughs) um that you're like being outside end up with a cold i I believe those things can still be related in some way shape or form it's just the reason the reason behind it is not exactly like solid yeah, I, I would say it at least suppresses your immune system a little bit. Right, I'm not exactly. so sure on that, but... I'm pretty sure it is true. But I, the myth I remember as a kid was just being out in cold... Don't you ever remember, like, maybe your... Like wet socks, take them thing, off. But your parents would tell you, oh, you got to wear a glove and gloves and a hat. or Because you're going to catch cold? cold. Yeah. 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 So that's just not true. You can go outside this winter and stand on your porch all day long from sun up to sun down and you're not going to catch a cold. That's not that's not true though. If you is, if, yeah. if you get cold, your you immune system pneumonia. your your immune system can drop and be more susceptible to the virus. So right. it, it's not a it's not false like but, but, but standing on your front porch no one is there to give you a cold. You but if you already have a virus. virus you might be fighting off the virus fine, but you get in the cold and your immune system suppresses and therefore the virus takes over. But I, I, would, I, would not, I would not put this in the category that it no, is. You still didn't get the cold from standing outside. You got it from somewhere else. Right. How do so, you know the cold wasn't standing outside? The cold virus <laughs> the, waiting for I, I think the argument would be if you were living in sub-degree weather and there was nobody around, you would never catch a cold. Right. Um... Okay, I can see that because I mean that gets into the concept of not necessarily herd immunity, but that kind of type of thing. As just you're never exposed well, to. Something. I was actually I, I just learned a new fact that we're talking about um, Native Americans in uh, in America. Why Europeans like when they came over to America? Why they their viruses like the smallpox and stuff wiped out like 95% of the uh, Native Americans living in America. 
And they were saying, a lot of scientists believe that uh, when they went over the Bering Straits and whatever method they got over to America, it's that um, a lot of the uh, viruses like smallpox and stuff couldn't survive in that environment. And then when they made the trek over to America, it basically wiped out that disease, that virus, that those, um, those causes. So when they get to America, they basically were cleansed of those. So that's why they had no immunity to it, is they couldn't survive that trek over the Bering Strait. I, wait, I don't, I'm confused. The Indians, or the, excuse me, the Native Americans never moved. They're the ones who got the viruses from the okay. Europeans coming over to America. So let's say there's a, a smallpox virus in, uh, you know, Africa and Asia, uh, Africa, Asia, and Europe, right? Right. During the uh, period where the Bering Strait was frozen over, the Ice Age, when they moved from Asia to the Americas, it was so cold that the smallpox virus couldn't survive in that environment. Okay, I got so, you. But how, how is this related to the argument of it wiping out the native people of the land? Oh, so they had no immunity to it. And that's why, like, Africans, uh, Asians, and Europeans, they can survive smallpox at a much higher rate than Native Americans. Uh, okay. I, I just, uh, well, and I think it's probably partly to do with once you're exposed to a virus, you start building immunities to it to some degree. Right. No, I, 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 I understand. And, and, the, and the, whole, the whole thing about this virus, this, this is where I'm getting confused at your story, is it wasn't in America. It was in Europe, Africa, yeah. wherever these people were. They moved over to America, and therefore they spread the – oh, good God. That's a lot of hell. Um, well, okay. Stop so, it. And they, spread, they spread over to – I wasn't yelling at you. I was yelling at my phone. Um, no. they, they spread it over to America, which they had not been exposed to it, and therefore it killed them because their bodies weren't ready for right. it. I don't understand where you're saying how it, it got wiped out. It didn't get wiped out. Once it came over here, it stayed and no, killed no, no, a bunch no. of people. Like, you basically didn't have an immunity because you didn't have that virus in that environment, right? Right. I basically, you had that. a clean room, which is the Baron Strait. Well – like we were saying with colds, that cold weather caused you to have cold and and stuff, and you get the cold virus from it. But like with smallpox and uh, certain other diseases, it's that cold that actually prevented people from getting smallpox. Is, are, are you getting this? Like, you know, okay. I think you you're trying to talk the beforehand. Second saying that when nobody else came to America, the virus couldn't survive over there because it was too cold. Okay, I, I understand that. That's the whole way that this thing is. The second people started going over there and introducing the virus, it wiped everybody out. I mean, that's I, I, I'm, I'm confused at you telling the story because I thought the way you made it sound is you were saying that Europeans came over, then the virus couldn't survive because it was too cold in America. No, 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 like, no. No, that's, that's, that's not what that's happens. Europeans, but no, look. When, well, it was, it was Europeans when, this first. When, well, well, probably yeah. Asians or Russians or whatever you want to yeah. call. Them. Uh, those people when they came over to the Americas, like Canada, they America, they brought the disease with them. They didn't bring the disease with them because the cold weather wouldn't allow po smallpox so, to survive. Okay, so I am hearing you right. So how did the disease get to America then? You're saying oh. nobody could bring it over because it was too cold. How they bring it over right. then? They didn't bring it over. That's why there was no immunity to smallpox. But when the Europeans on ships had smallpox came to America, that's when smallpox came to America. And that's and because they haven't had any genetic uh, evolution to handle smallpox, basically wiped out almost all the Native Americans. I don't understand why you're saying the initial people who came over couldn't have brought it because it was too cold on the journey. Because they lived in cold weather. It took them a long time to get to the America. Right. So basically, like, if you had everybody like, who had it died on the way, and therefore the people who survived <laughs> didn't have the disease. Yes, yeah, sort of like that. Like, uh, let's say it takes like a, a hundred generations to get from Russia to uh, Alaska side of America. Right. Oh, you're and, not uh, they, talking people coming over. I thought you were talking people who were like coming over to trade with the Americans, not 
You're, you're talking no, no, no. the back, generational back. gap of people. When the Bering Straits actually there. existed, like okay. several thousands years ago. Okay, I, I'm on your I'm on your understanding now. I thought you were still talking about like a boat trip time frame, not a oh, evolutionary yeah. time frame. Yeah, maybe one winter is not enough. Maybe well, you know five winters, a hundred winters. Okay, I, I got you. I got you now. It well, guys, sense. we're running out of time, but I want to read a few more. I quick looked up the Wikipedia page of old wives' tales. Uh, okay. So here's a handful of them, and we can talk for a few minutes about whatever. So masturbation will make you go blind. We've all heard that. Definitely. Uh, True I would not. be blind by now. Cracking knuckles gives you arthritis. Um, Definitely have heard that. Don't mm -hmm. swallow your gum or it'll stay in your stomach for seven years. And actually, I thought of one that's sort of a, a takeoff of this. If you swallow watermelon seeds, they'll – Sprout in your, <laughs> in your stomach. Yeah. Mm, uh, watermelon. Chocolate leads to acne. Um, shaving makes hair grow back thicker. Eating crusts off of sandwiches makes your hair go curly. <laughs> Wait, Wait, what? what? I, I never heard that one before. Oh, I heard that when I was a kid for sure. Oh, is yeah. that why your hair is curly? Maybe. Maybe it is. I used to like crust. I, you know, could be. Um, <laughs> and then. Well, this is more of a, like a superstition, but it's bad luck to open an umbrella indoors. So that doesn't really, I guess that doesn't really count. Yeah, I wonder why that even exists. Probably because one kid was kept opening the umbrella up in his house and his dad was like, hey, it's bad luck to do that just to get the kid to stop. And or he told him, well, you just threw in the eyeball with it. <laughs> then it became bad luck in that household and that spread. Hmm. It's possible. <laughs> it's <is> possible. <laughs> Likely as, too. As as a father to two small children, I could definitely imagine that happening. Do you just lie to your children all the time? Like this is a reason. Like people will die of AIDS if you, you know, run in the house. And um, you just start like. <laughs> well, they're too young to have a thorough understanding of AIDS, <laughs> so I don't use that as an example so much. Um, Santa Claus will stop existing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to avoid therapy bills later, so I don't I quite go that harsh. But, uh, all right, let's call it good. So, so ju just so you know, I'm looking up, it is George Smoot who won a Nobel Prize in some way, shape, or form for... Uh, that was a timely reference, Jeff. Doing we, something uh, doing something with the Big Bang Theory. You stopped Just talking about this a long time. The show? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not the show this day. It actually is. It. That's why he was on the show, apparently, is because <laughs> of, he did that. Okay, guys. Right, Thanks guys. for watching. Get out of here. See ya. See you guys.